it is utmost important to have a good high resolution CT scan. You all are aware that it is done in supine position, the HRCT, in deep inspiration. The you know the collimation, the better. When we started CT scan, we used to go up to 2 mm because we couldn't go below 2 mm. Today it is available 0.75, 1 mm collimation is available. Now, why is that yellow? Supine and deep inspiration in yellow because there are times where you will need to do a prone CT and there are times you will need to do expiratory CT scan. The reconstruction that is done is in high algorithm. Depending upon the vendor, whether it's G, Philips, Siemens, Toshiba, they are different. Like in Toshiba, it can be L, lung, or in Siemens, it can be B70 or B90. So basically, these are bony algorithms. Now, nowadays, very few centers give retrospective targeted. At least they should be modified and they should not be filmed like 30 in a, on a film because you need to do minute images. And the beauty of HRCT or chest findings are you can actually document only 20 on a film and the findings are similar everywhere. So you can take the few images of the apices, few of the middle part and few of the bases. So don't try to make too many images in one film. If you want to give too many images, at least give two films. Now the window and length also is important. Basically it's a long center. That is plus 1600 or 1500 and the level is minus 500 to minus 600. So these are very important. Basically breath hold in inspiration, supine position is very very important. Now. Before you go on to acquiring the CT, you must know few, at least some detail. As I told you, the symptoms are similar. So at least what's the age? Is, the, is it a female or a male? Because some diseases are common in females. Smoking, because we'll be covering about smoking related ILD. Any exposure to occupational hazard or even when it comes to subacute uh, hypersensitive pneumonitis, whether the patient is near any allergen or whether the patient is near where they are feeding the pigeons. If the patient has any systemic symptoms like tightening of the skin, joint pain and what is the duration and progression. At least this basic if you know it helps you. Now what we are going to deal is patterns. Why is that so? Because you cannot point out this is the sign and this is the diagnosis. So you are going to take these patterns, put the jigsaw puzzle and try to come to a diagnosis. What we know is our pathological classification that this is a lymphocytic interstitial pneumonia, that it is a respiratory bronchiolitis interstitial pneumonia. This is a pathological classification which we give in diagnosis. But what you need to know is patterns. Patterns, whether there's lace like pattern, like in reticular pattern, there are nodules, there are any cysts, or these are interstitial changes, or are there associated airway disease also. Now reticular or lace like pattern as you can see here, you can see that these are septal thickening or this is septal thickening. Basically if you take a lace then this is absolutely mesh or net like pattern and you actually stop seeing the normal lung. What you are seeing is septal thickening be it intralobular or intralobular. So now this is nodular type of interlobular septal thickening and the white part the paintbrush I call it or this part so this is the second pulmonary lobules with thickened interlobular septal thickening and this is intralobular septal thickening so this pattern is a reticular pattern so this is one pattern now again I've showed you that that, that patient had nodular interlobular septal thickening so why is it important? Because if you have nodular pattern, it's more likely going towards a certain disease. If it is smooth, then it goes in pulmonary edema. But if it is irregular, node, it can go into IPF. So first pattern is septal thickening, interlobular or intralobular. Now what do you mean by intralobular? That is within the secondary pulmonary lobule, you get these. Paintbrush appearance, complete whitewash. You are not seeing interlobular, but the septal thickening is given kind of a ground glass appearance. And this is subclural. Now, this is a supine film. I told you we are doing it in supine, but when you get something like that, this could be basal dependent density. You make the patient prone, and if it persists, then it is not dependent basal density, but this is definitely early IL, pointing towards early ILD.
interlobular part that is between the two lobules. Now if you can see this is a lobule which is a these lobules are polygonal shape. So this is a lobule and centrally there is an arteriole. So this is a thickened interlobular septum. You can see thickened interlobular septum. Most of them are subpleural as you can see here. I just have a magnified image. This is the magnified. So you can see this thickened interlobular septum. This is thickened interlobular septum. Basically there are interstitium is either peribronchium around the bronchi and the vessels. It is in the subpleural or this is the in the secondary pulmonary lobule. So there are these three types of interstitial called as actual interstitial. The interlobular septum thickening which is seen in the subpleural re region. So we saw intralobular, interlobular and then you get something called as honeycombing. What is honeycombing? Is this honeycombing? No. Is this honeycombing? No. This? Yes. Why is that so? Because by definition whoever described it thought that at least two or three layers of tiny cysts in the subpleural region form. So these are rows of tiny cysts. This is nothing but honeycombing. Honeycombing points towards irreversible interstitial lung changes. Next pattern is ground glass. Now what is ground glass? Is This is black looking lung where you have this whitish looking area in the perihylar region. This is coronal section. You can see this is the ground glass appearance. Now this could be consolidation but it is not. Why? Because actually you can see preservation of vascular markings. Now you have two things you have to remember in ground glass opacity. One, if this is an ILD and it is a chronic form and you get ground glass, then it is exaggeration, that is alveolitis. But if you get ground glass with no changes of honeycombing and you don't have traction bronchiectasis, then this patient has a reversible ILD. I hope I am clear. Another point of ground glass is it can be seen with hemoptysis. Basically, it means that the interlobular between the two lobules, there is either seepage of fluid, be it mucus, or be it lymph, or be it mainly blood. So, this ground glass appearance is a little more whiter when it comes to alveolar hemorrhage. So, ground glass appearance can also occur in hemoptysis. Also, one point more to remember. Now cystic pattern, basically cyst. Where do you get cyst? When it started we thought about, we saw cyst in centilobular emphysema. What are these? These are small cysts in the lung. Maybe some of them have a central white dot, but they don't have very well formed periphery. Then you have tanger and histocytosis. Added to this are RVILD, UIP also and LIP, that is lymphocytic interstitial pneumonia. Later form of usual interstitial pneumonia, I have not added, but yes, you can have a cystic variety of PCP. These are the cysts, varying size, sub-centimeter size cyst seen in left lower lobe, lingula, and one of the cysts must have ruptured and the patient has presented with pneumothorax, young female. Another case, multiple cysts, bilateral pneumothoraxes with nodules. Okay, we keep this also in mind. This is the third type where the whole lung has become like a seam. <coughs> you can see multiple cysts in bilateral lung with large bullet. There is hardly any wall of the cyst. So this is nothing but centrilobular emphysema, <coughs> which we see in smokers. From septal thickening to ground glass to cyst, we go to nodular pattern. Are the nodular <coughs> pattern important? Yes. Any nodule which is more than 3 cm is called a mass. So we are dealing with nodules which are pinpoint or and less than 3 cm. So I have written 1 cm, latest says that it is it has to be less than 3 cm. Solitary pulmonary nodule is another entity but here we are calling multiple nodules and we will be dealing with pinpoint sub cm size nodule. Now the distribution is important. Whether they are perilymphatic. These nodules, if they are perilymphatic, look if they are around the fissures. Then you can say, are we dealing with sarcoid? There are other findings of sarcoid we talk. Then if they are random, means they are hematogenous spread. That can be seen in certain diseases like miliary TB, like in silicosis. Or are they centrilobular nodules? That means within the secondary pulmonary lobule. 
which can be seen with hypersensitive dermatitis, tropical yosemite. So you have nodules. Now look at this nodule. This is around the bronchi or the bronchovascular area. There are no peripheral nodules, but these are around the vessels. Tiny nodularity around all these bronchus and also around the vessels. So this will keep in mind. These, this is the fissure. Can you appreciate the fissure? This is a fissure. So these are around the fissure. So now those were also around the peribronchial lesion, but we have it around the fissure. So pointing more towards sarcoid. Now here, these are more centrilobular. And how are these nodules? If, if you remember the a slide before this, they were nice pinpoint, a darker white looking. Here, they are more ground glass and they are more centrilobular. Look at the fissure. There is no perifissural nodule. Look at the bronchial vessels. There are no perivascular nodules. Certain types of interstitial lung disease do have consolidation. But I am just showing you a consolidation which is actually infective. Just to understand what a consolidation is. It's a dense area. Okay. With, in this you are seeing air bronchogram. Sometimes you don't see air bronchograms. You have to find out whether the consolidation is peripheral based. Whether it is triangular in shape. Because there are certain consolidations which are seen in interstitial lung disease, one of them being cryptogenic organizing pneumonia. And one more thing that is important when you start is how is the location of all these patterns that I have shown you. Be it nodules, be it septal thickening, be it honeycombing, be it ground glass, whether it is perihilar, whether it is upper zone, upper low, middle, upper and middle or only lower or it is a pico-basal gradient that is it is involving the whole lung, but apices or upper lobes is less and lower lobe is very much more. Is it mainly subpleural? Is it perihilar? All this is important. 